So welcome to the Sexual Integrity and Restoration. My name is Pastor Nick. Um, this is my wife, Sandy. Hello. Uh, we're full-time missionaries here in Okinawa, Japan. And um, this is the place for real talk, for real people looking for real answers. Because we don't have all the answers. We don't have a monopoly on truth. We do have a lot of experience, uh, personal experiences, but more so we have the Word of God. Amen. And so we try to take our experiences, line them up with the Word of God, and, and do our best to take a swing, for, you know, walking in faith. Swipe right. Swipe right. There you go. <laughs> and um, uh, so today's topic has to do with headship in, in a marriage. And I often contend that women were created by God to be led by a man. Now, I can back it up if you have an ear to hear. If that upsets you, I pray that you just listen for a little while and try to try to receive because this is the order of God. Um, so there I was. I would like starting with the story. Years ago, uh, I was I was overseeing a men's fellowship, and um, it was Father's Day. As Father's Day was approaching, we were going to do a step program, and uh, uh, the brothers were going to come out and talk about you know the strength of a man, the the, the leadership of a man, the, the provision of a man, and things like this. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we had a young lady who was who was gifted in the theater, gifted in the arts helping us out and as I was narrating uh, as, and practicing and I was narrating the play um, at some point she stopped and said well whoa 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 wait a minute are you gonna say that the man is the head I said well yes because the Bible says that the man is the head and uh, and she quit right flat right mm -hmm. there on the spot she quit and she said I, I, yeah I can't be a part of this I said why not she said because in my house in my house it's 50 50 there is there we're both heads and I told her straight to her face, because I loved her, I said, anything with two heads is a freak of nature. Two-headed cow, two-headed snake, two-headed turtle, two-headed dog. It's a freak of nature. It's abnormal. You can't have two heads. There's one head. And I gave her scripture for it. Regardless, she walked away and left us hanging. We, we did the play anyway. It turned out great. But um, it bothered me. And But before this young lady left the island, maybe two years later, um, she did come to me and Sandy and she apologized and she shared that you know I've watched you Sandy over the years you remember what she said to you? Mm -hmm. she said I used to think that you were passive and that that's your husband right. was ruling over you and yeah that's right and because she felt like she didn't really know me so much personally but she felt like if you made a statement like that that you, I had to be passive in that you had to be ruling over me. But she said as she had been watching me, she realized that wasn't the case at all and that that wasn't our relationship. Mm -hmm. so, she, did, yeah. she did apologize and she, she presumed that that meant that someone is supposed to lord over you and rule over you. That's mm -hmm. not what that means and I'll explain in a second. Um, it's not degrading or anything like that. Now, I'll, I'm going to explain in a second. Um, but she did go on to say that Part of her, her dukes were up, her guard was up, was because she was raised in an abusive uh, home. The, the father and the stepdad that came in, the mom remarried, both of them were very abusive in the home. And she swore to herself as a young lady that when, when it comes to my turn, I'll never let a man rule over me like that. Mm -hmm. And then she did, again, she repented, she apologized and said, you know, I, I, I need you to pray for me and, and let the Lord teach me how to submit to my husband, how to respect him and give him the, the, the honor he deserves as the head of the house. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. What does that mean to submit? What does that mean for a man to lead? Because it's, the, whew, that's, that's most, I'll get there, I'll get there. Let me, let me pray and we'll get started. Actually, let me read Ephesians 5, uh, verse 22 through 33. Now, long passage of scripture, so bear with me. Um, Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 22 uh, through 33. I'm going to read the, end, the rest of that chapter. Mm -hmm. It says, Wives, submit your, uh, to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and his, uh, himself its Savior. Verse 24. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of water with the word, so he might not 
verse 27, so that um, he might present to the church to himself in splendor with, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Verse 28, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. 29, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Um, where am I at? Just as Christ does the church. Mm -hmm. 30, because we are members of his body. Verse 31, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 32, this mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, there's, there's a whole lot being said here. I'm going to go over this again. But, again, my contention, and I believe the Word of God backs all of this up, and if, if you're going to get butt hurt by this, you need to grow up. But it's my contention that women were created by God to be led by a man. The man is the head. The man is the leader. That doesn't, say he, that doesn't mean he's perfect. He, most, uh, I'll, I'll explain. Please bear with me. Let me pray for you guys. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, it is written in your word that love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, who is given to us, Father. And, Father, I think it's, it's you who are in us, Father, so we can acknowledge that love reigns supreme in our marriages, Father. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, we, the believers, your sons and daughters, we believe that love is displayed in full expression, enfolding and knitting us together in truth, making us perfect for every good work and to do your will. Your will is at work in us, and you're working in us that which is pleasing in your sight, Father. Father, as I pray for these men and women, I pray that they live and conduct themselves in their marriages honorably and becomingly. Father, that these men and women esteem marriage as precious, worthy, and of great price. Father, I thank you. These men and women commit themselves, uh, Father, to live in mutual harmony and accord with one another, delighting in each other, being of the same mind and united in spirit. Father, I thank you for these men and women, and they believe, and they say that uh, they are gentle, they're compassionate, and they're courteous, they're tenderhearted, and they're humble-minded. Father, I thank you, these men and women, they seek peace, and it keeps their hearts, in, and they keep their hearts in quietness and assurance, because uh, they follow after love and dwell in peace, that their prayers will not be hindered in any way. Father, these men and women, these husbands and wives, are heirs together of the grace of God. Therefore, their marriage grows stronger day by day in the bond of unity because their marriage is founded on your word and rooted and grounded in your love. Amen. Father, thank, thank you, you for, the, for these husbands and wives and for the performance of your word in these marriages. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so, so real quick, short announcements. Again, the schedule with COVID and all that. I'm doing Facebook Live videos, so um, check out the videos. You can go. I've archived them at the Zebulon Facebook page. Zebulut. And um, in the meantime, we'll just be doing Facebook Live videos uh, until we can get back out there physically. Uh, as, as far as subscriptions go, I ask that you consider subscribing to our newsletter and our blog. I have a blog. Uh, it's called zcdc.wordpress.com. zcdc.wordpress.com. There's newsletters out there, probably at least 100 newsletters out there. And uh, they're brief, they're popular, they're succinct, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's me. It's me. It's not milk. It's in your face. It's raw. It's candid. Um, it, it, it makes disciples very quickly. I don't fluff words and, and, and bounce around. It's just direct. Mm -hmm. Check it out. You'll, you'll, you'll learn. You'll grow. You'll be provoked. You'll mature. But share them also. I ask that you share those um, newsletters, zcdc.wordpress.com. I also have uh, a YouTube channel. It's called Yahweh Has a Son. It's all one word, Yahweh Has a Son. There are some um, uh, brief videos out there, um, five minute, three to five minute videos, short ones, devotional type videos. But there's also a series uh, on sex out there, five hours of sex, what the Bible says about sex, not this manby pamby secular, uh, ungodly garbage about sex, real talk about sex, biblical truths about sex. Go check it out. Yahweh has a son at YouTube. Um, I'd also ask that you, uh, as far as... Uh, financial support and donations, I ask that you consider uh, helping us out. I, I'm, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't a concern, uh, but we do need your help because we're out here uh, completely by faith, uh, try, making disciples out here. And even as we're out here, um, it, it takes a toll on us. I'm I, you know, just speaking for myself. 
I know it takes a toll on Sandy too, living by faith, because we put up with people like you, and a bunch of knuckleheads out there, and, and you don't want to grow up, and you fight us every step of the way. But I'm, I'm just trying to point you to Christ. I'm not, I'm not going to baby you. Anyway, that comes back at us, man. These people, oh, yeah. and so so it becomes, you know, I got to find the balance when to say no and not not counsel everyone. I because I want to counsel everybody. I want to help everybody. Yeah. I can't. I don't have the time. I'm not that guy who can do it all. And so. It, it takes its toll on me. The burden I have for, for seeing people matured and equipped and discipled, it takes its toll. We've, we've sacrificed everything to be over here to do this, and uh, we've, we've forsaken everything uh, for, for the works of the Lord. And so consider, if, if you, I'll put it like this, if you benefit from anything that we say or do, and it helps your marriage or helps your personal walk or it disciples you or you break that masturbation habit, then, then consider yourself blessed but also consider helping us continue to do that because there's going to be people after you that need help there always is all right and this is what we do while we have strength in our bodies we're here to help i'll give instructions on how to give in the comments after this video um there let's just jump into this mm -hmm. so the the topic on the table and and uh, i guess i'll ask sandy this up front <laughs> because uh, this is controversial women were created by god to be led by a man women were created by God to be led by a man. Now today, that's very unpopular. That that's very that, that's mis misogynist and sexist. And and I'm like, it's, it's Bible. Yeah. And so, Sandy, what do you think? And not only is it Bible, but I'll explain. Hang in there. It's not something that anyone should be afraid of. It, it's not a topic that anyone should be afraid of if they truly sought out what God is truly saying in this passage they would not be afraid of, of this you know of this statement yeah and you know what God has called us to do unto him he doesn't just put us out there and say you know I'm just gonna forget about you as I give you you know direction in your life as I give you commandments in your life I'm just gonna put you out there let you do it on your own and and forget about you and not not honor you in, in your life that's not what God is saying God is yeah. saying yes honor what I'm calling you to do and and I will honor my word God listens for his word to perform it and as we do yeah. those things and we honor what he's called us to do he provides what he said yeah. and so it, it's not a phrase that we need to be afraid of yeah that word submit and respect uh, I'll explain that word uh, submit and respect what that, that charge given to women to wives um, it's 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 resisted. It's a rejected. It's like well, whoa, whoa! I'm not going to be a slave to anybody. Uh, you you probably don't understand. That makes you already a slave to something because you're, you're already you're yeah yeah you're rejecting the truth exactly. And so there, there's an order to the things of God. But I have to ask you, um, you believe that statement true to be true? Of course. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I understand what God is saying. Women were created by God. That means I'm better than you. That means you're perfect, honey. Yes. <laughs> Does, but anyway, does that, pretty, pretty close. Oh, gosh. So um, what, what's wrong with you? Why do you believe that? And isn't that submissive? Isn't that like putting you lower than me? No. That's a high calling that I really don't want. I mean, <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm glad he gave that to you and not to me. <laughs> this is one of the things. When we've talked to women, we pose this question because I've, I've you know, spoken at marriage conferences mm -hmm. Uh, Sandy and I have had conversation with prisoners and, and classes and conferences, and when we bring up this this principle that women were created by God to be led by a man, um, most healthy, wise women, mature women, are yeah yeah that's right that's right they accept it because they know it's the ones that reject it the ones that criticize it that 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 point there's something wrong with these women yeah, and you know what the common is. denominator that's it what's the yeah. common denominator in these women who who afraid they're afraid of that. They're they're a wound. They're, they're hurt. They've been hurt. They're wounded. Yeah. They're hurt. They're afraid, and usually it's because a man did that mm -hmm. to them, and so I, I get it. Their guard is up. This is, mm -hmm. this is what happens when our guard goes up. But I want you to see something here because we're talking about um, wives submit yourself to your husbands, as unto the Lord. Well, submission, mm -hmm. respect. What does this really mean? Mm -hmm. I want you to read First Corinthians eleven verse three, the very important passage of scripture. First Corinthians eleven verse three, because most unhealthy, immature women think that to submit to a husband is degrading. Well, let's just read the Word of God real quick and let me see if it's degrading. 
1 Corinthians 11 verse 3 says, But there is one thing I want you to know. The head of every man is Christ. Yes. The head of every woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Read that again. But there is one thing I want you to know. The head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is God, is man. And the head of Christ is God. And so if it's degrading for me to be Sandy's head, then is it degrading for God to be the head of Jesus? That doesn't even make sense. And we understand that Jesus was submissive in all things to the Father's will. Was that degrading? It wasn't degrading at all. It was just the order of God. And so he, and he was equal with God. And, he, and, and so we're equal. But there's, there's an order that comes here. When Listen, when Adam and Eve were, were, were created in the garden and, and, and God molded them and created them, I want you to hear me on this. First of all, uh, we got to go here. We got to go. Go to Genesis 2. Great scripture. Go to Genesis chapter 2. This is where Adam was alone. Verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Mm -hmm. 19. Now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. 20. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. Mm -hmm. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh 22 and the rib that the Lord had God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man the man said this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh mm -hmm. she shall be called woman because yes. she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh and the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. I want you to pay very close attention to what I just read here. In that passage, verses 18 through 25, in that passage, who was the woman created for? She was created for the man. Who was she made from? Amen. She was made from the man. Who was she given to? to she was given to the man. Mm -hmm. And who was she named by? She was named by the I'm man. The man. Go ahead and say it. I'm the man. You're the man. I'm the man. <laughs> so, listen... <laughs> The women, where's, where's my nose? she was made for the man, she was made from the man, she was given to the man, and she was named by the man. And so this is, this is the woman, this is the order of God, and the, the charge for, for, for the husband, you know, it's a, it's a covering, but if I had to describe this just a little bit more, it goes like this. He's actually underneath her, supporting her like this, and hold, lifting her up. That's what the husband does. That's what it means to submit to submit, to, to let someone be up underneath you and kind of lift you up. This is what submission is talking about. Yeah. I mean, you think about when you become responsible for another life and oh, how man, so intimidating good. that that's is really and good. how scary in a way that is because you're thinking, well, I, you know, I don't know how to oh, this you know, is so take good. care and provide for this new life. I like that. And, and God brought forth life unto Adam and he gave woman to him and so Adam was there for, God made him responsible mm -hmm. for that life and to cherish it and that it, it, it came from him. Yeah. So it was this a really part good. of him. And yeah. so, you, you know, that's, that's something that, that's a high calling. Mm -hmm. That's a high and responsibility. Can you imagine if, if you had if your, your first child and when you get home from the hospital, mm -hmm. you're walking home, you left as two, but you're coming home as three and you've got this new thing in, in, the, in the carrier and you're wondering, what the heck just happened here? Yeah. And so you're responsible for that baby's life. Now, and likewise, I will say this about single men. Single men, one of the best things you can do is get married. One of the best things you can do is get married. And I'm not talking about late in life. I'm talking about young. And, you know, from 18 to 26, you should already be married. I'm, I, I can really explain that. The reason why is because when a man fails to get married, what ends up happening, he, he, he lives to him, for himself. Mm. And this is the problem with men. You become self-centered and you never grow up. I'm, I'm saying something right now. You men out there that are not married yet, 
you're you're a modern day Peter Pan, and you you you're, you always want to remain a boy. You don't want to grow up. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do for yourself, for another woman, for a family, for society is get married. Because when you get married, immediately, if you're any kind of a man, your your focus shifts from you mm -hmm. to to your wife and kids, yeah. and and you become responsible. Exactly yeah. what Sandy is saying. Yeah, because you have to think about someone other than yourself. It's not just about you. You know, a lot of times, you know, people. That's why men are are better in jobs. They're um, more hireable exactly when right. when they're married and all those things because. They have commitments. They have yeah. responsibility. They have That's things they yeah. have to take care of besides themselves. Now, now, now let me explain something here. I'm going to say this again. Women were created by God to be led by a man. The problem is most men don't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Most men are lost. Most men are godless. They're Christless. Mm -hmm. and, and they're just doing their own thing. They're self-centered lives instead of selfless lives. And see, and what woman would want to follow that? Right. It's very difficult for a woman to, to, to follow that and give into that. Yeah. And there's, I, didn't well, want to, I guess we'll cover that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to jump to I, that I, too soon. I just want you to know that in the garden, when God breathed the breath of life into, into Adam, Adam woke up into something. When, when, when the breath of life was breathed into Eve, she woke up into something. The man primarily woke up into relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, into, into uh, responsibilities. Responsibility, responsibilities. Yeah. When Adam, take charge. You're in charge. When the woman woke up, when, when she was awakened, she woke up into relationship. Mm -hmm. And so women tend to be more relationship bound. Men tend to be more responsible bound. This is why we're, we focus. This is why I said women were created by God to be led by a man. There's deep-seated relationship. Woman, uh, man was created by God to be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, women can be led by the Holy Spirit also. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the man is the head of a house. is supposed to lead that house. He's the tip of the spear of that house, and he's supposed to lead that family deeper into Christ. You know, there's a stat out there that says that if there's, a, there's an unsaved family, and I've see, seen this a couple different places, if there's an unsaved family, father, uh, husband, wife, father, mother, all that, and kids, they're all unsaved. If the daddy gets saved, then 95% of the time, the wife follows and the kids follow him into Christ. Yeah. The other way around is if you got the same family, but no one's saved, but the wife gets saved. It's only 5% of the time that the husband will follow her into Christ and the kids will follow her into Christ. Mm -hmm. See, this is the mantle of leadership that's on men. Mm -hmm. there's a, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a mantle of leadership that God placed on men. Men, you're called to be leaders whether you know it or not, like it or not, believe it or not. You're called to be leaders. The problem is most of you don't know where you're going. And if Christ is not a vibrant part of your life, you're lost and nobody wants to be a part of that because you don't even know where you're going. And a lot of people say, well, I've done this in the prison several times. I'll take these polls and I'll ask the people, um, <laughs> what's wrong with America today? Is, does America have issues today? And everyone says, well, yeah, there's death, destruction. There's just, it's, just, it's a mess in America today. And I'll say, uh, who's, whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? And uh, they, they kind of toss around some answers. I said, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. And I'll throw this out there. I'm going fishing. I'll throw this out there. And I'll ask these guys, um, <clears throat> do women have issues today? And the men jump on this real quick. They'll say, oh, yeah, women got issues. I said, what's wrong with women today? What's wrong with women today? And they'll say things like, uh, women are disrespectful. Women are independent. Uh, women, some of them can't cook. Some of them, <laughs> and they go on and on and on about women. And I'll tell them, look around. Look around the pews here in this brig, in this prison chapel. Do you see any women in here? 99.9% .9 of all the prisoners we deal with yeah, are men. We, we have a handful of women, maybe, maybe three to five women every year. Tops. The other hundreds, men across the board. What's that say? We're, we're number one. We're leading. We're leading. Where are we leading people to? So anyway, women were created by God to be led by a man. And um, <clears throat> men were created by God to be led by his spirit, to follow Christ, to, to fear God and keep his commandments. And uh, um, wh who's at fault here? Who's at, why won't women follow men today? A lot of women won't follow men today. Why not? Trust. See, there's, there's trust. You know, you ever heard that old saying, all men are dogs? You can't trust men, all men are dogs. There's a lot of truth to that. Men cannot be trusted. 
And so um, e even talking with my daughters, a lot of times they'll say that um, it, it's very difficult because most guys, they take this scripture that says, wives, submit to your husbands. Uh, they take that scripture as, I'm, I'm going to lord it over you. Mm -hmm. Man, you got the wrong understanding of what, right. what love is. I thought you were going to jump in there. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, you know, when you understand that Christ is the head of man, if you have not put Christ over your household, then you've already, you're already not leading properly. And you're already not going to know how to lead as a man. And so if, if a woman is supposed to follow you as, she, as you follow Christ, it's, and you're not following Christ, mm -hmm then that whole household is going to be, you know, kind of lost and messed up. And so the order of things is that Christ is the head of man. And, yep. it, and so that's why, you know, even, but even as if he's not doing that, God has still called us to do what we're supposed to do. And as we honor him and as we call on him and we put those things before him, God mm -hmm. begins to line that man up. Yeah. He does, and he's the only one that can do it. Yeah. You can't change him. That's, that's a whole other conversation yeah. about how you're going to get that man to start loving Christ. Listen, let me clarify something in Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 22 on down. When, when it talks about mm -hmm. wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord. And then it goes on and says, and husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for the church. Mm -hmm. there, there's a whole lot being said there. What you, the takeaway here, what you need to understand is that... Um, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord. If yes. you as a wife, as a woman, don't know how to submit to the Lord, you will not know how to submit to your husband. Exactly. And that's a, that's a, that's a heavy charge, but a greater charge is the husband, what, what God gives the husband. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ yes. loved the church and gave his life for her. Mm -hmm. Husbands, I'm telling you right now, if you're not following Christ... If you're not eagerly all out following Christ, you will not know how to love your wife. That's right. It's impossible for you. Because if you know Christ, you'll know how to love your wife. Mm -hmm. Wives, if you know Christ, you'll know how to submit and respect your husband. You know, you know what love is to a man? Love to a, to a man is respect. They, they were, I read this book. I can't, it was Shanti Feldman. She wrote a book some time ago. I can't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. But she wrote a book some time ago, Shanti Feldman. And she said... Um, they did this poll, and they asked men um, and, and women, which would you rather be? Would you rather be unloved or disrespected and alone? And all the women said, I'd, I'd rather, I'm, I would never want to be unloved. Mm -hmm. And every one of the men picked, I would never want to be um, respected. Respect. Unlove me. It's okay. You can unlove me. Just don't disrespect me. Mm -hmm. And so this is what men need. Men need respect. Now, getting back to the point here, <sighs> What is wrong with people today? Yeah. We've lost this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to take a quick tangent real quick. Women, I mean, if, if I were to say, how do we fix this? If I were going to say, how do we fix this? Because there's a lot of confusion about what a husband is, what a wife is, what submission is, what love is. There's a lot of confusion about this. But how do we fix it? If I fast forward and take this little tangent here, how do we fix it? How do we fix it? And I, one of the things I would I would propose is that obviously we want men to have revival, Holy Ghost, turn around repentance in their lives. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. But 50% of the other, the, the flip side of that coin is women have power. You have a lot of power. You have more yeah. power than you realize. You know where I'm going with this? I think so. Do you know how much power women have? Because I'm going to tell you right now, most of you guys, most guys, when you first get married, you don't have a clue about marriage and relationship and selfishness or selflessness. It's definitely not the power that is being taught to women today. Yeah. You know, the, so. the, what's being taught to women today is you're fighting against, against your against own self-interest. Yeah. Because you're being taught that men, men are, you know, mansplaining and manspreading and, and, and men are the enemy. Men are not the enemy. Right. You know, there, there are some knucklehead men out there that are the enemy, but I can, we can go back and forth because I know a whole lot of knucklehead women out there that are the enemy. That gets us nowhere. Let's talk about the solution. And the solution is women, don't discount the power that you have. You have a lot of power. A good, wise woman knows how to speak into her man's life. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about even before marriage, even during marriage. You know how to mold a man, and a man needs molding. He doesn't need to be disrespected. He needs molding. 
And most, most of you guys, you need some humility. And this is where it's going to break you off a little bit. Because um, a lot of you think it's just, I'm the man. You just do, do as I say. That's, that's not it at all. That is not it at all. One of the, I, I know I'm the head of the house. I know I'm the leader of the house. However, I also know this. We co, co lead. There are times when I, I'm just not up to it and Sandy's, you know, got the head. I know she is. But see, the thing is, I need, the, the person I run to right away for wisdom is my wife. I, I, I don't, I say that without reservation. When I have a problem and I have, I can't see things straight, I'll drop it on Sandy and Sandy will, she has a perspective that I welcome. She has an insight that, that I, need to, I need to know, and I'm humble enough to say, I need to see how you see this issue. I have to see it how you see it, because I can't see that way. And the flip side is, ladies, he has a perspective that you don't have. Mm -hmm. You're not right either. You're supposed to bring it together, yes. hug it out, talk it out, <laughs> and, and then make a decision together. Yes. And, and take it to the Lord together, you know, and, and God will guide Watch both this. of you, you know, in not not only in the solution, but even how to communicate it to each other. Because a lot of times we want to say it the way, you know, the way we see it and the way we feel like it should go and, and that's it and, and that's the end of it. And that doesn't help anything because, yeah. you know, neither one has come to the conclusion that, that God is trying to lead you to. See, let me ask you this. Who knows more about the opposite sex? Do men know more about women or do women know more about men? I've asked this question in many, many conferences, many classes. I've asked this question. Mm -hmm. And across the board, who do, you, who do you think knows more? What do we get all the time? We get that women know more. We get it all the time. Women know more. And um, guys, when I ask them this question, most guys, I'd say 95% of guys I ask, they'll yield and say, women know more. Mm -hmm. What do I know? Women know more. Because they don't really care. Yeah, they, they kind of don't like... care. But they'll just say, women, women know more, whatever. But just about every woman that we've talked to said, I'd say 95% of women will say, we know more. We, we had a Brig counselor years ago at the, in the Brig, and uh, this question came up, who knows more about the opposite sex? Do men know more about women or do women know more about men? And this counselor, she was actually interning for her, um, for her master's or doctorate, mm -hmm. I can't remember. But, and, and, and she happened to be in there, so I asked her, I said, so what are your thoughts on this? And she said this. She put her butt up on her shoulder. She said, well, you know I know because I'm a counselor. You know I know. I was like, okay, go ahead. Do tell. And she says, women. And I said, bah, in front of everybody. I gave her the buzzer and everything. She said, what? I said, what is the number one thing a man needs? What, is, what does he need? And she said, love. I said, bah, again. A man does not need love. A man needs respect. Women need love. Wives need love. Men need respect. And I said, and I told her, I said, it's very possible because you didn't know this answer. You didn't know this, and you call yourself a Christian. You didn't know this. You're disrespecting your husband, probably at every turn. And she said, what? How's that even possible? What are you talking about? And I said, well, let me give you a couple examples. Have you ever done this? And I went down this list of scenarios, and she, she was disrespecting her husband at every turn. Simple things like, um, I asked, are you, have, you, have you guys ever been late to a function, a party or something like that? You've been late and you're driving and he's rushing. And, and, and you, you, you blurt out while he's driving. You know we're going to be late, don't you? That's very disrespectful. She said, how is that disrespectful? I said, because he's not stupid. He knows what time it is and he knows we're running late. I said, have you ever, has he ever been lost driving? And you, you tell him and beg him to pull over. And, and you, basically, he doesn't want to pull over because most guys don't want to pull over. I'll pull over in a second because I hate wasting time. I'll pull over in a flat second. Most guys, they don't want to pull over because it's a puzzle to them. They want to get out. They can get out of that situation. But most women will harass a man and say, pull over, pull over, pull over. Translation, I don't trust you mm -hmm. to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. What that means is that you as a woman would pull over. You would pull over. And you think you're right. You're not. Give him some room. Give him some room. And then correcting kids in public. And so I went down this whole list, and she said, yeah, I do it all the time. I said, that's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know, you override his authority in public. You can't do that. You're, you're destroying your marriage. And then the guys feel crappy, and they don't even know why. It's because they're feeling disrespected. I mean, I, I talk to different women who would, you know, you're in a church setting or you're in some kind of group setting, and a topic is brought up, and the woman says, 
to the husband. Oh, oh, you know you need that. You need you definitely need to go to that. And so you know, <laughs> so many wives they sit there poking their husband like that. You better listen. That's he's talking to you right now. And I mean, sure, mm-hmm. encourage him to to get involved in things, but at the same time, what you're saying to him right now in front of everyone is that. Oh yeah, that's an area that you're messing up in, and you need to go get that fixed. You need to oh, definitely horrible. go. And so, you know, they didn't even realize that that was a way that they were disrespecting him in front of you know an entire group. I, yeah. yeah, I want. I, it, it, I guess one of the things I want to harp on here because we're like on second base, heading into third, almost you know finished with this segment. But I want to. I want to address this. I want to kind of point this towards. The power that you women have, you single women have, you married women, you have a lot of power. One of the one of the most powerful things you have is this thing called sex. It is. It's a powerful thing, and it, it's 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 more powerful than you realize. What will a man do for sex? Mm. We saw a Steve Harvey segment on um, uh, Family Feud, and they were asking, <laughs> "What will a man do for sex?" You can YouTube it. It's hilarious. And most of the men, just about 99%, got all, they got all the answers right. Not one woman got the answers right. <laughs> yeah. And the guy would said, I would, I would beg for sex. I would lie for sex. I would kill for sex. And yes, and, and this is what we'll do. A man will marry you for sex. So if you're giving it up now, you know, what's, what's that thing called? That uh, app, OnlyFans? That app? That, when I was talking um, to my daughter, and yeah, I saw this. Uh, OnlyFans. Um, there's an app out there, and it's it's just about. It's, it's awful. I don't even know what to call this. It. Like it's pornographic. It's it's sexual. It's 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 it's. Girls are getting on this only app, only fans app, and they're they're selling themselves, and it's like a it's like a dating site, dating app type of thing. But they're they go farther and farther. The more people they get, the more money they get. That means they have to do more provocative things, show some cleavage, show some things, and, and they go farther, they get paid more. So the more flesh they show, the more fans they get, more clicks they get, more money they get. They're selling their souls. Yeah, Proverbs awesome. 632, that says, whoever commits adultery, and this is a form of adultery, whoever commits adultery lacks understanding and he murders, they, basically they murder their own souls. And so they're killing themselves. And so... Yeah. I, I want women to know more than anything, it's not hopeless out there. It's not hopeless. There are good guys out there. I, I will put it like this. I really believe there's a whole lot more dumb guys that are out there, young, unmarried. They're, they're dumb, but there's, they're, they're like a diamond in the rough. They have a lot of potential. And so you don't know as much as they, they know. Both of you are equally stupid. You just, you just think you know more. So I, what I'm telling you is that you have power, ladies. You have power. You have power, and one of the most powerful things you have is this thing called sex and affection in your heart. Don't give it away cheaply. Yeah. As soon as you give it away cheaply, what's the, what's the song? I just I was just reading the song. Cardi B came out. And I was it was oh, on. A, it was something about her junk is wet. Something it's 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 it's, it's really wet. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's 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 pretty nasty. This is the, one of the most degrading things. However, it's popular. Now, why is it popular? And what? And some girls, a lot of girls, are buying into this, yeah. and they think that's bragging rights. Yeah, my stuff's wet too. This is the dumbest thing. Now, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something because I was you know, having this conversation recently. A guy will sleep with you like that. He'll sleep with anything that moves practically. Mm-hmm. So basically, what, what's your value? What is your value? You you just want to be a, a booty call? Because if you want just want to be a booty call, a guy will sleep with you. But but will he marry you? Because you you don't want to just be a piece of trash or just used and abused and thrown away. You're looking for a long term relationship. Yeah, and they they need to find their identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, when we begin Why? to know who we are in Christ, when we begin to see ourselves as valuable and as more than just something to just give away fleetingly like that. I mean, God. it's you know. God created us, especially Man. women, as such a gift to to the world, to men, to to just to our children, to just so many parts of life. There, there's just women are so valuable, and if they un- only understood just how valuable they are, we we wouldn't give away things so cheaply. Mm-hmm. You know that um, I, I've met women. Uh, and in counseling and whatnot, and um, and and they've gotten loose and they sleep around. And this is what they think. A lot of women think this: that well, if a man can do it, I can do it too. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and you're not going to put this stigma on me because if a man can hoe around and a man can do all this stuff, but the women gets all the stigma. And then because why is it? It's unfair for the man to be able to do it. And then you pat him on the back. You know, he's, it's like an accomplishment for him. And it's an achievement that he slept around with all these women. But if a girl does it, that's, oh, that's just not right. Double standards. And so these women are thinking, I can do it too. I've met women who said things like, um, well, it's my turn now. You know, I'm doing the same thing that men, that men are doing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting them back. You're an idiot. You're not getting it back. You're being used and it doesn't yeah, work. It doesn't work. Because a guy can turn it off. You can't turn it off. You'll carry those scars with, for you the rest of your life. So well, a guy, he just doesn't think about it. And it doesn't work for him either. That's I mean, exactly he, right. he's empty inside as well, which is why he continues to just do a repetitive act that means nothing. And so it, it doesn't work for either one, but especially for women, it's it's more of an emotional, um, they're, they're really killing themselves inside. And, yeah. and so women can't just turn it off like that. And they are still desiring That's good. The, the desire that God placed in us, which is, is to be loved. That's good. And so that's what women are ultimately trying to achieve, but they're going about it in all the wrong ways. Yeah. You know, I think um, um, where, where singles are concerned, guys are looking for it, girls are looking for it, but we express it in different ways. And if we find that avenue, the path of least resistance, yeah. we're lazy, we're going to take that path. It's terrible. But most guys... They, I'm telling you right now, I believe deep down in the heart of a man, we're all fleshly. I don't care who you are, you're fleshly. But most guys, if you really get down into it, they, they want to do right. They just don't know how to do right. And they need to be trained. Girls, they want to do right also. And it hurts them, but they compromise. You know, most girls, um, when, when polled, and you talk to them about this kind of stuff, most girls, when polled, they say, I gave up the sex because I, I just wanted the touch. I wanted the fellowship, I wanted the relationship, so I gave up the sex. Mm-hmm. And you heard that saying, men use love to get sex, women use sex to get love. It's true. And so women will oftentimes give up the sex to get the touch. Men will often, you know, give up the love, you know, to get the sex. And so we, we, we got this thing going, we want the same thing, but we're destroying ourselves. Um, but I, bringing this back to the girls. Girls, I really believe they're a lot more forgiving for, for guys. And this is, this is why you, ladies, you need to understand that you have to work with the guy. Now, if the guy's just baggage and he's a turd, keep moving. Don't, don't waste your time with this guy. But most guys, and, and guys, you need to understand this. You ugly guys out there, and you think you're ugly, <laughs> you're not ugly. You just have to be, stop being clingy, nerdy, goofy. You gotta grow up some, and when you be, when you start growing up, the number one thing women will look for in a man is confidence, someone they can be happy around, someone they can trust. That's what that not looks. It's not necessary looks. I mean, you've seen it. You've seen, you know, good-looking girls with ugly guys, dumpy guys. It's rare when you see it the other way around. I don't think I've ever seen a, a really good-looking guy with an ugly girl. That's one of my points. Me and me and my daughters go back and forth on this, and they're right. They're totally right. That's why uh, the movie uh, Beauty and the Beast, you know, ugly guy, good-looking girl, and she's she forgives his ugliness. I don't think they can reverse those roles and have right. uh, uh, not. <laughs> uh, uh, what what a good-looking guy with an ugly girl. You, you'd have to show me that somewhere. And so, because girls are more forgiving, it's not about looks with them. But I think it also goes back to, you know, our main topic, which is women are created by God to be led by a man. And it's because the wife and well, the woman is seeking after this man to lead. And so it's it's not so much about how he looks. It's more about him having the confidence and knowing where he's going and, and allowing God to lead him so that he can lead that family or even preparing himself for that even before he's married. And so I think that has a lot to do also why with why women are a lot more forgiving, you know, in the looks area and things like that because they their heart ultimately desires for that man to to be the head, to lead, to bring that family uh, to take that family where it's, you know, to where it's supposed to be yeah. and to honor her and to cherish her and yeah. to take care of her. I agree. You know, so that she can trust yeah. in that. I, I grew up, I remember growing up, 
even in, in junior high and high school, um, I, I wanted a great marriage. But at 14, 15, 16 years old, what do I know about relationships and sex and marriage? What do I know about this? But I, I just knew I wanted a great marriage. And, I, and I'd seen couples uh, in, in, in relationships and some were just, I'm like, they're going to kill each other. And they, a lot of people were not happy. And, uh, but I said, I don't, I don't know how to get there. And so when I first got married, I was not saved. I was not saved. I was doing everything wrong. But, but in my heart, I wanted to love Sandy. No one taught me how to love Sandy, though. And so what, what ends up happening, I did get saved. And when I started getting saved, growing in Christ, I'm telling you right now, just growing in Christ forced, mm -hmm. forced me to walk in humility. And as I walked in humility, I began to get underneath Sandy and just try to lift Sandy up. I wanted to support Sandy instead of, you know, growing away from Sandy while we were married. And so it, it still comes back to Christ. I'm telling you right now, it comes back to Christ. We're going on 34 years of marriage, and it's hot. It's caliente. It's, I think the Japanese word is atsui. And I have to say this, too. You know, a lot of times we as women, you know, we say that we want that man to be the head of the household, to lead, to take, you know, charge and everything. And then a lot of times we don't let them do that. We're, we're stepping on them in every area. We're kind of pushing them back, you know, and, and we're taking charge or we're not really allowing them. And a lot of times there are men who will allow the, the wife to do that and he'll just sit back and do nothing. And that's and she doesn't respect him for that. And, and that's not really where he needs to be. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, even as you were talking about when, when you first came to know the Lord fully and... Um, and initially, you know, me having grown up in church, you know, I was kind of a little in, taken aback by that and didn't really... Taken I, aback I, by what? Well, I like the fact that you had come to know Christ, you, you got saved and everything. Watch this, watch this. But at, at the same time, I was like, how's he going to tell me? You know, I've been in saying? church all of my life. He can't tell me that, you know, I was kind of bucking up a little bit. And What, what she's saying is... <laughs> is when when a man gets saved, I'm t look at me, hear me. When a man gets saved in a house, this is let's say this is a man and a woman, and they're growing. In, they're, she's growing in Christ. She's up here, and what happens when a man gets saved, and it's it's legit. That man will take off in maturity, revelation, yeah. and understanding. He'll take off and he'll surpass her. Yeah. And oftentimes the wives get upset and they're like, "Who are you to be who are you to be telling me about the Jesus stuff? I was born and raised in the church. You just came into the church." You know, you want that man to surpass you. Want you you, you want that man to to, to, <laughs> to lead you, and and revelation will flow to that guy like it's not flown to you. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's just kind of true, all right. And so we've had so many wives say that like, and they're like, no no no, honey, Look, sis sis, you want this man. Yeah, this is a good thing. He's growing and revelation is flowing through him and he's maturing. He's he's growing and he's starting to teach you about the Bible. Yeah. And and God shows him things, you know that that he hasn't been doing in leading that family. And so he's trying to correct some things. So, you know, you need to begin to allow him to do that and seek God also. And, and so that you can begin to, there's that word submit again. Mm -hmm. You can begin to submit onto what God is calling you to do and, and how he's pushing that man to lead that household and, and yeah. be in the right place, get in the right place that uh, of Look. headship that he's been called to in the first place. Look. You know, girls today, oftentimes, even even some wives today, that that passage about wives submit to your husbands, wives submit, just submission. It's, it sounds like slavery, sounds like bondage, sounds like I'm losing out. It's, it's not what's so losing the opposite. out. It's it's the opposite because Jesus submitted everything to God, mm -hmm. and 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 God is the head of Jesus. That wasn't degrading, and so it's kind of the same thing. There's an order to the things of God. And, and, and getting back to the point here, women were created by God to be led by a man. The problem is most men today don't know where they're going, yeah. and, and women don't trust men. I get that. It's true. I get that. I don't trust men when I'm talking to them. You can almost you can look at them, and, and they start blinking, ling, 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 ling. You know they're lying to you. And, and you ask them about your masturbation habit. When's the last time you looked at porn? When's the last time, you know, have you ever committed adultery? You ever had an abortion? You got an STD? You start asking questions, and they... They start hemming and hawing. Mm -hmm. They can't be trusted because they're carrying a lot of baggage. Well, what I'm getting at, who knows more about the opposite sex? Neither one of you. Men don't know and women don't know. We speak two different languages. Right. And so there are guys out there, <coughs> excuse me, 
there are guys out there who, who, who need to come alive to the things of Christ and then understand what leadership actually means. It doesn't mean I'm at the top, at the, at, the, at the pinnacle, and you're down here. It doesn't mean that. It means I'm down here, and I serve you, and my, my wife and kids, are. I'm, I'm pushing them to go farther than me. Mm -hmm. Wives, it doesn't mean that um, submission to him is a bad thing. It means that he's the leader. Let him lead. Let him lead. And what, this this thing, I just I just want to. I don't think we. I think I missed it somewhere along this this conversation. There there's all I know is that there's a disconnect between women trusting men and men trusting girls. And guys are using girls. They'll sleep around. Girls are giving it up way too easily mm -hmm. today. Stop giving it up. This is a power that you have. And. And there are women who are afraid, well, if I don't give it up, she'll give it up, mm -hmm. and I'll lose him. But when they, if, if, uh, girl, yeah. if, if he doesn't want to wait for you, he's not worth having. Trust me, there are good guys out there. They're out there. Mm -hmm. They're not all hoes. I, yeah, I said hoes. It's in the Bible. <laughs> and and, and this, this, I heard this yesterday. Uh, Danielle was telling me about this. She said that, um, oh, what's it about? Virginity is not a myth. Virginity is not a myth. A lot of people say, oh, that's just a myth. That's just a myth. The last polls I read, 40 to 50% of American girls are still virgin. 40 to 50% of American girls are still virgin. 40 to 50% of American girls are still virgin. That, so what's that telling you? There's a whole lot of folks out there lying about this mm -hmm. stuff. And that 10% of hoochie women out there running around, uh, you know, making it look bad for all women. It's not true. It's not true. And so, so what if it is true? That doesn't give you permission to go out and sleep around yeah. that's the most horrible thing you can do guys you too stop stop hoeing around because uh, i can really uh, go back and look at some of the videos about what sex does to you mm -hmm. you know uh, when when done out of context so uh, or out of time the bottom line is here is is god created his hierarchy god created it the man is the head and there's a reason for that. That doesn't mean that's him ruling at the top. Right. It means it's him on the bottom serving and laying down his life and providing. If, if women could, mm -hmm. could believe that and if men started walking this, it would turn, uh, change everything, turn everything around. I, I think, you know, I guess because we hear that word in church, we hear submit and we hear how, you know, men are supposed to be head of the wives. And a lot of times, you know, when we look at the church or we think that hierarchy in the church is is supposed to be you know the leaders ruling over everyone you know in the You're church right. and and so i i'm i guess that's why it's it's looked at that in relationships as well yeah. and so they automatically feel like well this means that the husband is supposed to that's rule good. over the wife and when you say submit that means she's his slave and yeah. and all of all so of true. that is wrong if if the leadership in the church is being done like that that's incorrect yep. as to how god called it to be and then in relationships that's incorrect because that's never what god that's never that was never this his is, plan this is such a crucial topic today what marriage is what marriage is which is why marriage has been attacked aggressively over the last 50 60 years it's been dismantled, it's been deconstructed, it's been reduced. And what's happening, there, because marriage as God intended it, builds. Marriage as God intended it, builds. It builds families, it builds unity, it builds oneness, it builds healthy kids, mm -hmm. it bu builds great cities and governments. But when you dismantle marriage and, 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 and devalue it, and we don't need married. We've got common law. Matter of fact, two, two guys get married. Two girls can get married. Anybody can get married now. Hmm. Then you, you, you're destroying what marriage was intended to do. The yeah. two become one flesh. And so if you're sleeping around with five people, you're, you're connected and married to those five people. Mm -hmm. And when you finally meet her, Mrs. Wright, all of this comes into that relationship. There's no getting around that. And you have to unpack this. You have to divorce this stuff. Yeah. And same thing with you, young lady. If you're sleeping around, it's, you're, you're killing yourself. You're, you're destroying your potential. And so this whole thing, um, being afraid to, to, to submit to a man, um, you want a man to lead you. Yeah. The, you know what the responsibility is like for that a man has on his shoulders to lead properly? And he needs help. I gotta say this, those of you that, that are married right now, many of you think that your husband walks around confident, brash, bold, and you know, he's just you know, all uppity and, know, and, and a know-it-all. That's not true at all. Most men 
get up in the morning and they have to build themselves up internally mm -hmm. to face another day because they're all, they're, most men are afraid they're going to be discovered that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They make it up. And so women, you women out there who think that, well, my husband needs to be knocked down a few pegs before he gets out that door. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're destroying a man who's already down. If anything, that man needs to be built up. Mm -hmm. His ego is fragile, you, just like yours is fragile. And men, your job is to build up that woman and remind her that she's beautiful. Remind her that she's the apple of your eye. Remind her that she's your desire. Yes. This is your job. And if you're not communicating that, you're not. that's part of leadership. You're not leading. Uh, I'm not good. sure. That's really good. I'm not sure if we did anything today or not, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, need, I need some help, Th comments and thoughts and whatnot. Sandy, anything else? I mean, I just, it, it's such a huge topic because, you know, it goes in so many directions and, and, you know, I've had women say things to me like, well, why should I have to, you know, commend him for yep. washing the dishes or doing things, taking uh, care of the kids or doing things that he's supposed to do in the first place. Yeah. Well, don't you like it when he commends you for when you do those, when you do something These, that is, is great? Yeah. And it's not saying that y you got to pat someone on the back every time they do something, but what's the harm in it also? I mean, building each other up re yeah. can require, it's not always going to be 50-50. And there are times when one may need building up more than the other. Right. And, That's so it, true. you know, it's better than ugly words that you can yeah. say to each other. And yeah. not only that, when God, you know, in, in Ephesians 5.22, when God says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. He's not saying, well, only do it when, when you know, Nick is being really good and when he's yeah, when acting he's right it. and when he's doing everything right, when he's earned it. He said, God said, unto That's the right. Lord. That's not optional. Yeah. It's not optional. When God says submit, that's not an option. That's a commandment. When God says love, that's yeah. not optional. It's a commandment. And see what, what Sandy is saying. This is what wives say. Wives will say, I'll respect him when he's earned it. Mm -hmm. Well, let me take that same principle. I'll love you when you've earned it. You see, that doesn't feel good, does it? It doesn't bring life. And so one of you has to just take charge and be the first one to start respecting or the first one to start loving and let God and just trust Christ to take over. Yeah. Trust Christ. And so, um, look, I, I read a paper. It was a quick article a couple of years ago. Sandy shared it with me and I thought it was quite profound, but it was entitled, I think you can probably Google this and find it, but it was entitled marriage isn't for me. Hmm. And about a young man who'd been married a couple of years and went to his dad and said, yeah, dad, this thing ain't working out. Marriage isn't for me. And the dad told him, you're right. Yeah. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's not about you. It's not a, it's not a individual thing. It's a team thing. It's a one flesh thing. Mm -hmm. Marriage isn't a me thing. And so this is what this whole thing is about, man. And so anyway, anything I'm going to pray. Amen. Thank yeah, you, so Lord. Father, I pray 1 Corinthians 9, 24, all these people, Father, these men and women, and they know that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So these husbands and wives, these men and women, they run to win, and they discipline in their training. They Some run, run to win a prize that will fade away, but these men and women run for an eternal prize. They run with purpose in every step. Father, I thank you. They're not just shadow boxing, but they discipline their bodies like an athlete, training their bodies to do what it should. They make their bodies obey you, Lord. And Father, I thank you these men and women will run this race and they will not be disqualified. Father, I pray Philippians 3.12 over them that these men and women have not yet reached their goal and they are not yet perfect, but Christ has taken hold of these husbands and wives so they keep on running and struggling to take hold of the prize. Father, I thank you that these men and women know they haven't already arrived, but they forget what's behind them and they struggle for what is ahead. And I declare they run toward the goal so they can win the prize of being called to heaven. Father, this is the prize that God you offer because of what Christ Jesus has done for these men and women. Father, I pray 1 Timothy 6.20 over these people right now that they guard what you have entrusted to them, Lord. They avoid godless, foolish discussing, discussions with those who oppose them with their so-called knowledge. And I pray Hebrews 12.1 over them, Father. These husbands and wives, these men and women know that there is a great cloud of witnesses surrounding them so that they lay aside every encumbrance, every sin which so easily entangles them. And they run with endurance to race that is set before them. Mm -hmm. And they fix their eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the perfecter of their faith. Oh, I pray Jesus, in Jesus' name, Father, all this Thank over you, them. Lord.
Amen. Amen. So as we wrap this up, let me know. I, I'm, I don't feel like, I think I missed it today. I really do. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I got to go back and readdress this yeah, and make sure. It's a big topic. You know, kind of fine tune this thing a little bit. But uh, share your thoughts, share your throwbacks, uh, share this video, and uh, support this ministry. You know, we need your help, you know, and, and it's, it's good, good ground, good seed. Um, I want you to give somebody a high five and, 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 and three people. Give three people a high five and tell them, submit to the Lord. Love you. Bye. Amen.